If you have solved 500 problems, done three DSA courses, even followed that famous 100 day challenge and still can't solve real interview questions, this video is made for you. Hi, I'm Rajat Gajbe. I'm a software developer and content creator helping 190k plus people on LinkedIn to get better at tech and interviews. And in this video, I'll give you the only roadmap you'll need to get interview ready in 2025. Let's make your prep efficient and fun. I have seen people who have done everything, 10 playlists, more than 600 questions, 3 notebooks, still stuck. Why? Because most roadmaps are like Dhaba menus, 100 items, no order, no nutrition, you live hungry and confused. Let's change that. I have spent weeks reverse engineering the best DSA strategy, watched every big YouTuber, mentored 100 plus student one on one and cracked what actually matters. This isn't a motivational video. This is the exact strategy I wish I had when I started. No vague gain, no viral PDFs, just the practical part to crack interviews. We'll cover patterns, problems, mindset and right order of prep. So grab your notebook and let's fix your DSA prep once and for all. Let's go. Before diving into DSA, there is one non-negotiable. You need to pick one programming language and stick to it. Java, Python, JavaScript, it doesn't matter. Just pick one and stick with it. Once you are confident with the language, it's time to understand one of the most important thing in DSA. Big O Notation. I know, it sounds scary and name sounds like villain from Avenger. But trust me, it will be your best friend in DSA interview. So what is this Big O? It's just a fancy way to measure performance. Big O tells you two things. How much time does your code take to run as the input grows and how much memory does it use to complete the task? A lot of people that I mentor often ask me, Bhai, why is this Bigo so important? So let me break it down for you. Imagine you and your friend are peeling potatoes. You do it manually, one by one, one minute per potato and your friends, he built one Jugadu machine that peels 100 potatoes in two minutes. Now, if I say, bhai, pill 1000 potatoes, you'll cry and your friend, he'll be chill. That's Bigo. Your method is Bigo of n and his machine may be Bigo of 1 or Bigo of log n. Same task, but speed wildly different. So, if the interviewer asks, can you optimize the solution? What they really mean is, can you stop peeling potatoes with your bare hand and build a damn machine? Why Bigo matters? First, it helps you compare different solutions for the same problem. Second, it trains your brain to think about efficiency, not just correctness. And third, most importantly, interviewers care about it a lot. The more you practice spotting them in your code, the more you start thinking like an engineer, not just a coder. So yeah, Bigo might sound scary at first, but once you get it, it will completely change the way you solve problem. But before we jump into solving questions, let's take a pause and understand what we are actually trying to learn here. Because when I started, I had no clue. I was jumping from topic to topic, arrays, trees, graphs, whatever sounded cool. And honestly, I wasted months doing that. So here's the real picture. What is DSA? DSA stands for Data Structure and Algorithm. These two things are backbone of any code you will ever write. Let me simplify. Data structures, the container you will use to organize and store data efficiently. Your choice of data structure decides how fast your code runs, how much memory it uses and how clean or messy your solution looks. Imagine you are storing books in a library. If you use an array, it is like putting all the books in straight row, easy to access by position. If you use a linked list, it's like chain, adding or removing a book is super easy. If you use a hash table, that's like tagging every book with a number, super fast access. So choosing the right structure for your problem is like choosing the right tool for your job. Algorithms, step by step instruction to manipulate the data inside your structure. Things like sorting a list, searching for value, traversing a tree, finding shortest path in a graph. Algorithms are all about logic plus efficiency. But here is where most people go wrong. When I started learning DSA, I made one huge mistake. I tried to learn everything at once. And guess what? I got stuck. I lost motivation. It felt like too much. So if you are just starting out, 
don't do that here's a smarter way to learn dsa dsa is not one single subject it's a mix of three pillar first data structure start with basics arrays strings linked list stack queues and hash table then move on to the non linear one trees binary search trees heaps graph tries union find then second algorithms these are must learn sorting binary search bit manipulation tree traversal graph shortest path algorithm third problem solving techniques patterns this is where real magic happens these are reusable approaches for hundreds of problems two pointers sliding window prefix sum fast and slow pointers divide and conquer greedy recursion backtracking dynamic programming top k element using heap you don't need to master everything before moving on but you should understand each concept well enough that you can implement it from scratch solve easy level lit code problem using that concept explain it in your own words that's more than enough to move forward and trust me you will revisit everything again during revision anyways and now the right order to learn dsa now that you know what dsa actually is let's talk about the right order to learn it because this is where most people go wrong they jump straight into trees or dps without even touching array or recursion and then what happens they get stuck lose confidence and just give up so here's the order i recommend one that work for me and hundred of my mentees first arrays this is ata dal of dsa every other data structure sits on top of this prefix sum sliding window hashing sab kuch yahi se shuru hota hai second binary search if array are the body binary search is the mindset it teaches you to divide think recursively and trust pattern use it in dps greedy trees and honestly in life too third strings strings look simple until you get attacked by palindrome problem you'll start noticing little tricks here two pointer palindrome hash map they all start repeating fourth linked list most people hate this topic is the first topic where you truly learn how memory and references work reverse a linked list detect a loop you'll struggle at first but when it works fifth recursion the moment when you either quit dsa or fall in love if you don't get this right trees dp backtracking will feel like kala jadu so trust me spend time here sixth bit manipulation this is the hidden gem interviewer love asking zor or bit mask and most people skip it first stack and queues this is where your code start feeling logical expression problem tree traversal even graphs you'll see them everywhere master this and recursion will finally start making sense second two pointers and sliding window dss best jugadu hack perfect for sub array questions pattern matching and optimization you'll solve problem in half the time with double the confidence third heap and priority queue this is how you manage importance in code top k tajistra streaming data you'll see this in every greedy style interview question first binary trees this is where everything start to click recursion pointers depth first thinking traverse it like in order pre order post order becomes second nature second bst binary search tree take tree logic plus sorting plus search and mix it very common in interviews third graphs the final boss of dsa dfs bfs topo sort this is where your earlier learning actually pays off used in google map social networks and recommendations fourth dynamic programming most feared and most misunderstood start with recursion add memoization go to 1d then 2d then patterns Don't jump directly into coin change or knapsack you'll cry if you skip this structure you'll stay stuck forever fifth tries it is underrated gold mine auto complete spell check word search this is where it shines most people skip it if you don't you'll stand out tries is your flex topic every topic is a building block if you learn them in order you won't have to keep going back and fixing gaps 
arrays help you in string string plus arrays plus loop help you in two pointers two pointers plus prefix some lead to sliding window recursion helps in trees and dps it's all connected you just have to build it layer by layer if you follow this order you'll stay focused and actually enjoy the process you don't need to rush just go deep not wide one block at time and before you know it you'll be ready now let's say you just reach a new dsa topic maybe it's heaps tries or sliding window and your brain goes like ye kya naya bhoot hai bhai kahan se shuru karu yaar kuch samajh nahi aa raha hai don't worry it happens to everyone including me so here's a step by step system i have built over the years used it myself and given to hundred of mentees to go from confused to confident with any dsa topic step first start with the why not the code before writing a single line of code ask yourself if the topic is heaps why heap exist because sometime you want max or min element fast like zomato assigning the nearest delivery guy that's the priority queue in action once your brain knows why it becomes a tool not a bhoot before jumping into code or problems just sit and try to understand core idea of the topic step 2 break it like a lego every topic in dsa is just a bunch of small ideas stuck together so break it down what is it how is it represented in code what operation does it support time complexity space complexity are there any types or variations step 3 watch a 20 to 30 minute video Watch a visual explanation from Striver for roadmap clarity and Abdul Bari sir for slow or deep clarity. Step 4 use pen and paper. Before you touch the keyboard do this draw a structure do a dry run write rough logic flow you'll understand way better. Trust me visualizing tree or graph on paper sticks harder than watching five tutorials. Step 5 code it from scratch. Now that you understand how it works, implement it without copy paste. Use your language C++, Java, Python, whatever. Build a basic functionality like insert, delete, search. Forget the edge cases for now. Focus on just the skeleton. You are building intuition, not perfection here. Don't Google. Don't copy from GFG or Lit Code. Just open your code editor and try to build the topic from scratch. If it is linked list. create your own node class write functions like insert delete or print list you'll make mistake that's okay that's completely okay that's how you actually learn step 6 solve 10 to 15 question in three levels go to lit code or gfg and solve 10 to 15 problems from that topic break it down like this level 1 basic understand how to use the topic so if i take example of array you'll be solving problems like reverse an array find min max using array in level 2 the medium level start applying the logic examples are like two sum leader in array detect loop in linked list then level 3 the hard problems think deeply combine logic examples are like trapping rainwater kth largest element solve 3 to 5 problems per level and you will get comfortable this step is game changer you will go from theory samjha to ha bhai abhi kar sakta hu step 7 watch video solution especially the brute force and then optimize video solution if you are not able to solve the problems you are getting stuck don't rage quit watch the solutions understand the brute force then learn how it is optimized compare it with your own code and that's how you grow that's how you spot patterns step 8 make tiny notes after you have understood it write down time and space complexity one to line per operation some edge cases or tricks and there you go you have made your own cheat sheet step 9 revisit the problems after 4 to 5 days come back and try 2 to 3 questions again without checking your old code this step is super important because what we learn today we often forget next week this test tells you if your brain has actually retained the concept or not so come back after 4 days and try solving 2 to 3 problems without looking at the notes see what you retained fill in what you forgot this space revision helps in long term retention step 10 spot patterns across problems now take a step back look at the problems you solved and ask what's common across this problem what's logic keep repeating what's the reusable pattern in mini sliding window problems you move two pointers start and end and shrink or grow the windows 
you'll see this again and again in longest subarray, maxim, anagrams. This is called pattern recognition and this is the real skill that companies test in the interviews. Step 11. Mix and match the topics. Once you know few topics, start solving problems that combines two or more concepts. Some examples are like a uh, hash plus sliding window problem is longest substring without repeat problem. Uh, binary search plus arrays is book allocation problem. Because interviewer don't care about simple topics, they test if you can connect the dots or not. Look, learning DSA is not about grinding 12 hours a day, it's about learning smart. So next time a new topic shows up, don't panic. Just follow this 11 step and you'll go from Aray bhai ye kya bhoot hai to Aray bhai ye to easy tha. Don't rush to complete 300 problems, instead master 30 to 40 patterns deeply. That's all you need. Learn, build, solve, reflect and repeat. Now I know what you are thinking. Bhai, itna sab karne ke baad, ab practice kaha se kare? That's where most people get stuck. Don't worry, I got your back. I have created handpicked list of 150 DSA problem, but not randomly. They are sorted by patterns. So I have grouped problems like sliding window, two pointers, binary search, recursion and backtracking, greedy algorithms, graph, dynamic programming and so on. For each pattern, you get 10 to 15 carefully picked question. Start from easy to then go to medium and finally hard. If you complete this 150 question list sincerely, you'll be 100% interview ready. No bullshit. Want access? I've added the link in description. Check it out and start your DSA journey right away. DSA isn't just about cracking interviews. It's about building a habit of solving problems, the kind that makes you better thinker, a better developer. I won't lie, the journey won't be easy. You'll have days where you feel like quitting. You'll get stuck on problems for hours. You'll doubt yourself. But remember, every top tier developer you admire has walked this same path. They struggled and they cracked it. So take it one topic at a time. Focus on understanding, not memorizing. And most importantly, don't give up. I have shared everything I wish someone told me when I started. Now it's your turn. All the best for your DSA journey and I will see you at the top.